The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Hello, I'm Shelley Quinn, and welcome to Wonderfully Made. You know, David wrote, Oh, I praise the Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And we are, but there are so many things that we do to ourselves that actually can ruin our health. And today we're going to be talking about something that you're going to want to hear about. And this is our topic today is stress and how to prevent it, how to cope with it, how to overcome it. And we have with us a, an expert. He is a cardiologist from the Chattanooga, Tennessee Heart Institute, and his name is Dr. Jim Markham. Jim, thank you so much thank for you. being here thank today. You. Now, when we get started on this topic, I know that we're going to have an audience that is tuned in and listening because everyone, it seems, is experiencing stress in today's world. Why do you think that is? Well, that's right. Well, there's lots of problems that are contributing to stress. And, you know, you think about, well, what is stress? You know, well, where is it around me? And the, today, getting back to your question, what's causing it? Well, our lifestyles. You know, we're running. We think we have to work harder and do more. We think we have to stay up later at night. We think we have to pursue the almighty dollar. You know, in some parts of the world, people are scrounging right now to stay out of wars. Um, people are having to fight to get the food they have. There's many different reasons that cause stress on a body. You know, uh, as you were saying that, I just had a thought. There are people that are sitting at home that are lonely, but maybe they've lost, uh, I mean, they don't have that fast-paced lifestyle. Maybe theirs is slowed down because, slowed, slowed down yeah. because of um, either their age or maybe an illness, but that Change can cause stress too, can't it? Yes, change can cause stress. Loss of a loved one can cause stress. Not being happy at your job can cause stress. Sin in your life can cause Amen. stress. Amen. The food you eat in your life can cause stress. The things you do and don't do can cause stress. Um, the list goes on and on and on. And, and I bet you, sometimes when I talk about this subject, the people just hearing of it, they start to get stressed from hearing about stress. <laughs> and sometimes when you hear about stress over and over and over, you start to get stressed. And I, I, I want to apologize because I know some people at home right now are getting stressed about it. But this is a topic we must, must talk about because stress is truly a disease. Amen. Stress leads to disease, and I'm afraid right now we don't hear enough about it, we don't recognize it, we don't have a game plan in dealing with stress. So that's what we want to do today with this program, is give people a game plan to think about stress as a real disease. Now, you are a cardiologist, yes. Jim, and I would like for you to explain what that is to our audience. Okay. Well, a cardiologist is a doctor that's trained in internal medicine, and specifically that trains to deal with diseases of the heart and blood vessels. What got me interested in stress is that stress plays a role in so many of these chronic cardiovascular diseases. It plays a role in high blood pressure and heart attacks. It plays a role in people's diet. Did you know that some people, um, just the food they eat causes them to have stress? Mm. But it's truly something that is, is you're going to hear a lot more about um, the next few years. And I guess what really tipped me over is my own life. I, I, I assessed, you know, what's going on, and, and I said, well, why don't I feel as good as I d do? You know, why can't I do more? Why not I'm more sharp than I should be? Well, I looked at things, and it, I was having a lot of stress in my own life, so then I really got to the basics of it. Well, that's good, and I know that I probably need to reevaluate some things as well. Well, Jim also has a ministry called HeartWise Ministry, and he teaches people how to be wise about their lifestyle choices. And because of this ministry, we have questions that have come in from all over around the world, and we're going to be reading some of those questions that deal with stress today. So this first question is from Brenda in New York, and here's what she writes. My friend Lori works at the desk next to mine. She says, I am stressed out. How do you know 
if you are stressed out? Oh, Brenda, excellent question. Most people, in fact, don't know that they're stressed out. One of the worst things, you know, at, at work, if you're stressed at work and don't even know it, you could have this stress disease for years and not even realize what it's doing internally to your body. Mm -hmm. There's the stress you know about, the conscious stress, but every input that your body gets from anywhere, every input is stored in, in your brain, in the subconscious. So the subconscious is working even when your conscious doesn't know about it and it can create physiologic manifestations. So your mind and your body are so tightly connected and then all these um, chemicals start to go that deal with the stress the stress hormones now I want to throw up our first graphic today these are some you know she asked if how do you know when you might have stress well some of the common symptoms of stress could be are you having headaches do you have unexplained chest pain are your muscles tight are you having problems sleeping do you have acid that bubbles up from your stomach are you having high blood pressure? Are you having palpitations? Or are you short of shortness of breath? Um, all of these, Shelley, can be symptoms of stress. But I think this is the best one th that I have for the audience. In a person that I think that having lots of symptoms, you know, you go to the doctor and say, oh, my chest hurts, and, and, and I do a lot of tests. I can't find anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, maybe they have the disease of stress. Well, one of the uniform symptoms is they don't sleep well at night. Mm. So I always ask people, do you sleep well at night? And if the answer is no, you have to say, well, maybe in addition to everything else, they're having some underlying stress. So, um, Brenda, back to your question. How do you know if you're stressed? Well, do you have any of these symptoms? And secondly, are you sleeping um, well at night? That would be a good one. And it's interesting that often people around us are the ones who recognize it. You know, I had my husband told me once, I said, honey, I think you're overworking, you're getting stressed out. And I said, that's ridiculous. But I went to a doctor and as I was talking to him, he said, you're going to burn out your adrenal glands. He said, you are going at high speed 24-7. And he said, you're killing yourself. So I took it seriously. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The second question comes from Andrew in Australia. And he says, my job in Sydney requires travel four days a week. I know this kind of schedule is not good for my body. What does stress actually do to the body? Andrew, that's a good question, and I appreciate, I've had quite a few um, comments from Australia, so I know the people in Australia are very interested about their health. But stress, and I'm gonna step on a lot of toes here, um, especially the, my friends, the truck drivers. I see lots of them that they don't sleep well. The, the salesmen, the people that travel, the people that are on the go a lot, mm -hmm. they frequently have high levels of stress. And now stress can come from anywhere. It can come from relationships, it can come from pain, it can come from you know, the things we eat, change. the things we think about change, loss of loved ones. Divorce is a big cause of stress. Mm -hmm. Job is a ch big cause of stress. Not having good relationships with people. But there's two types of stress that I want to talk to Andrew about. One is the acute stress, you know, the fight or flight. Um, if someone's threatening, you know, to, to kill you, okay, you're going to get your muscles up and you're going to battle with them. Mm -hmm. And you're going to battle and battle. That's the good type of stress. That's the kind of stress you want. Mm -hmm. But in chronic stress, your body is doing that all the time. One of the hormones that your body makes is called epinephrine or adrenaline. And this is the hormone that does all sorts of things in your body. For instance, it constricts blood vessels. Mm -hmm. It gets the body ready to fight. So all your muscles all throughout the body get tense because you're ready to fight a battle. Yeah. You mobilize your food from different places because you're getting ready to fight. You're not, you know, you're going to get the food. So the acid is, is in the stomach just churning because you're ready to digest whatever energy you can. Your immune system, well, we don't need an immune system in this course because we're going to move our body energies in order to fight. Your mind, it gets, it's just racing a million times a minute. Your heart starts to speed up, okay? Your, the muscles around your eyes tight because you're getting ready to, to try to defend yourself to stay alive. Another hormone that goes up is called cortisol, and this helps, you know, in, in our food process. Um, it helps, you know, the sugars in our body and things of that nature. Well, this hormone also changes. When these changes occur chronically, chronically, not acutely, but over the long term, your body can't deal with it. Now let's stop there for just a moment yeah. because those are words not everyone is familiar with. Okay. But when you're talking about the acute stress reaction, that means when it just, it happens rapidly, it's a sudden onslaught of this, and if it 
if you require that fight or flight, that's good. But if this is something that you are living in this condition chronically means that if it's a chronic condition, it's ongoing and then you are wearing your body out because there's all of these chemical changes going on right. in your brain and in your body and you may not be aware of it, but you're really killing yourself That's right. with and, stress. And that's why I call this disease, this is really a disease because clearly your chemical makeups is dramatically changed from this chronic stress. I think of a patient that I had not too long ago and get back to Andrew's question, um, he was a, was a truck driver Mm -hmm. He didn't sleep well at night. He ate poor foods. He was having some relationship problems. He had lost a loved one. Well, this chronic stress just drove him crazy. His chemicals all changed in his body. His blood pressure went up. He had acid indigestion. Um, and, and finally, when he was able to realize he had this and work through this stress one step at a time, his symptoms started to improve because this is a terrible disease that we have. Um, so, Andrew, um, what does stress actually do to the body? Well, it changes your entire chemical makeup. Not only the chemicals that fight acute stress, but the way you think. Have you ever been under a stressful situation? Your brain just doesn't, it works differently. It's mm -hmm. not as logical. It's doing things, drastic things, to stay alive. It's not thinking in that logical pathway that you would get in non-stressful situations. So you overreact yes, at that point. Yes, usually. Right? Usually okay. do. Well, let's go on to Marlene's question, and Marlene is from Ohio, and she writes, I know I am under stress. There are too many things going on in my life to list them all. What should I do to combat this stress? Well, Marlene, the first thing that you've done is recognize that you have stress, and that's very important. And the second thing that you've done that is so good is you're seeking help. Many people that are under stress first they might admit they have it, but then they won't do anything to change what's going on in their lives. They say, oh, my job is too demanding. I'm working two and three jobs. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm staying up at night, but they're not willing to make a change. And they're thinking that year in and year out, they're gonna feel great. But sooner or later, the stress is gonna take up for you. Now, I wanna talk about the way people do deal with stress, because there's different types of ways people do. Now, everyone has stress and you're, you're, you're dealing with it one way or the other, Shelley. Right. I mean, you, and you, you just can't ignore it. But let's, let's throw up a graphic about how way some people deal with stress and see if you, people in the audience might do some of these um, mechanisms in order. One is eating. Do you know anyone that eats when they're stressed out? I know a lot okay. of people who do. Overworking, some people just work more and more when they're stressed, and some people do the opposite. They say, well, I'm not gonna work at all. I'm just gonna lay at home in bed and do nothing. Some people re um, turn to drugs such as alcohol, cigarettes, caffeine, and cocaine. Some people take medications for stress. They'd rather take a chronic medicine like Valium and Benzo. I know some people, the way they deal with stress is they spend money. You know, they run up the credit card debt. And you hate to blame every, you know, spending money on stress, but it could be a symptom of stress. People have to deal with stress in some way or the other. When you have stress in your life, you just, you just don't say, I have stress and don't deal with it. Now you have to look at yourself honestly and say, well, if, when I have stress, how am I dealing with my stress? And you know, it occurred to me as you were going through this list that every one of those things, if you're eating because you're stressed, it makes you more stressed. Right. Because you're, you start gaining weight or you're having these problems. If you're out spending money and running up your credit card because you're stressed, then when those bills come in, you're more stressed. And certainly if you're dealing, you know, if you're using some kind of a drug to help you or caffeine or stimulant or something like that, it ends up making the problem worse, doesn't it? It does. But most people nowadays, when you think about it, they are dealing with stress in maladaptive ways. They're literally destroying the bodies that God wonderfully made for them. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you think about stress, getting back to the good ways of dealing with stress, you know, we have to focus on I think biblical ways in dealing with the stress, you know, casting our burdens on someone else, not trying to take everyone's burdens. Let's show the graphic about some of the, the good ways to cope with stress. One, this is, I think the only true way to deal with chronic stress is an active spiritual life. Amen. You have to cast your burdens on, 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 on your Lord. Amen. If you look the way when Christ dealt with stress, he went to his father in prayer over and over. That's the way he dealt with stress. He prayed. He cast his burdens. He got them off him. 
So you have to have an active spiritual life to deal with stress. Another thing that helps stress immensely is exercise, because exercise increases all of the hormones that help fight stress. Mm -hmm. Proper nutrition is another very, very important way to deal with chronic stress, and it only makes sense. Um, if you put good gas in your car, right. the car is only going to run better. Now we see examples of this biblically throughout all times. If you think back into Daniel and his friends, um, another reason we have to also recognize that we have stress. And those mm -hmm. are some of the things that we need to talk about. Another thing that's very important is getting appropriate rest. Getting away, changing a scenery, getting your mind away from all those things, letting your mind recharge are all important things in dealing with chronic stress. Now let's, for a few seconds, talk about some of these. You bet. Anyone jump out at you that's the same way, a productive way of dealing with stress? Well, I know that my only way, really, of dealing with stress at the time is just turning my eyes on the Lord. I need to do some more. I need to exercise more. I definitely need to just get away with a change of scenery, change, you know, rest more. Um, the interesting thing about being in ministry is that often on the Sabbath, oh, yeah. which is the rest day, I'm ministering. So it's not, and I love doing it, but that doesn't mean it ends up being really restful for me because there's a lot of preparation time that goes in and, and then you spend maybe four to six hours speaking. It's not necessarily a day of rest. Right. So. I can see a lot of things I need to change. Well, you know, I agree so much with that um, day of rest, you know, and God knew when he set up, set up this world that it was going to be stressful, Right. you know, and God worked six days and he literally took a day off for rest, not only spiritual, re spiritual rest, but a, a physical rest where he could rejuvenate our body. Now, you know, you, you might say, well, if I'm not truly spiritual and physically resting on that day, can I really have the blessings of that day? I don't know. It's something to think about. Well, I do know that as far as the priests ministering in the temple, I know I'm not breaking yes, the Sabbath, right. but it is something that I do realize that from time to time I think about because I am ministering on that day, I should maybe take another day yeah. off too. But there's a lot of things that people are not doing because we are caught up in this high-tech fast-paced society, and it seems to me that, I, I don't know about you, you may not be old enough to remember, but I can remember when Federal Express and UPS first came out, and you could get something somewhere overnight. We thought it was amazing. And then the facts came out, Jim, and at first it was like, oh, we could send a document like that, and it was so astonishing, but within just months of getting your facts, Pretty soon you're sitting there and you're drumming, you know, I found myself yeah. just drumming my fingers yeah. on the counter waiting for something because we want it now. And we're getting to where we expect such immediate results that we're stressed when we don't have them. Yeah. Well, you know, on, in me, as far as my personal life goes, the one that, that I thought has helped me more than I thought would be would be just the process of getting away. Yeah. You know, moving from your environment that you're in every day, day in and day out, and getting away, whether that be, you know, just sitting alone somewhere, um, taking a trip, a vacation. In fact, one of the ways I treat chronic stress, you know, in addition to the biblical ways, in addition to resting, is I, I tell somebody, I say, Shelly, you're, you're really stressed. And if we don't do something now, it's going to get worse. But what I'm suggesting is Wednesday afternoon that you take off from, from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock. That's your time. You can do whatever you want. No one can get to you. Now, if you choose to work, it's your choice. If you want to lay down, it's your choice. If you want to read a book, if you want to write, those are all your choices. And what I think this does is it lets your subconscious know that no matter how hard it gets during the week, I'm going to have a release valve. Mm -hmm. I have something to look forward to, and I can sort of rejuvenate my, my, my brain batteries in order to make it to the next time, which probably is going to be a Sabbath, when I can sort of rejuvenate myself again. I think that getting away mentally and knowing that that vacation is there has helped me more than anything in dealing with chronic stress. You know, I was thinking um, there was a young lady that I was ministering to that um, she was a young mother of three, homeschooling all three children and she was with her children 24 hours mm. a day, seven days a week. And I gave her the advice that you gave her, and she said, oh, but I feel like I would be a horrible mother if I took an afternoon off for myself. 
The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Hello, I'm Shelley Quinn, and welcome to Wonderfully Made. You know, David wrote, Oh, I praise the Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And we are, but there are so many things that we do. And his name is Dr. Jim Markham. Jim, thank you so much thank for you. being here thank today. You. Now, when we get started on this topic, I know that we're going to have an audience that is tuned in and listening because everyone it seems is experiencing stress in today's world why do you think that is well that's right well there's lots of problems that are contributing to stress due to ourselves that actually can ruin our health and today we're going to be talking about something that you're going to want to hear about and this is our topic today is stress and how to prevent it how to cope with it how to overcome it and we have with us a, an expert. He is a cardiologist from the Chattanooga, Tennessee Heart Institute. And you know, you think about, well, what is stress? You know, well, where is it around me? And the, today, getting back to your question, what's causing it? Well, our lifestyles. You know, we're running. We think we have to work harder and do more. We think we have to stay up later at night. We think we have to pursue the almighty dollar. You know, in some parts of the world, people are scrounging right now to stay out of war.